This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Amazon Prime's exclusive Lore. It's a chilling six-episode anthology series from executive producer of The Walking Dead and an executive producer of The X-Files based on the podcast phenomenon with over 70 million downloads. Creator and narrator Aaron Mankey explores the most terrifying tales throughout history, takes a myth that is rooted in historical folklore, and twists it, exposing timeless terrors that still haunt us today. Real life can scare you to death. Watch exclusively on Amazon Prime Video this October, starting on Friday the 13th. This episode of Memory Palace is brought to you by our friends at Article, makers of fine furniture with fantastic industrial and mid-century and Scandinavian designs. Also the makers of The Lamp that is lighting this script as I read it. They have everything you need at Article for your home, including brand new, a whole array of fine leather couches. These are really beautiful, extraordinarily well-made, just like everything they've got. And for $49, they will ship anything, including a large, beautiful leather couch to your front door, regardless of size. And you can get $50 off your first order of $100 or more at article.com slash memory palace. That's article.com slash memory palace. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. Samuel Finley Brees Morse spent the first 35 years of his life learning to paint at Andover, at Yale, in London at the Royal Academy. He studied the works of the masters, to learn how Michelangelo built bodies that seemed to pulse and shudder out of mere oil and shadow and crosshatch. To learn how Raphael summoned the spark of inner life with a single stroke of pure white in the dusky ochre of a noblewoman's eye. To learn how to create illusions of space and distance. To learn how to conjure the ineffable through the mere aggregation of lines and dots and stretch canvas. He learned how to paint. And in 1825, Morse was living in New Haven, Connecticut, with his wife, Lucretia, and two young sons. And a third child was on the way, due any day. One night, a courier delivered a message. The city of New York wanted to pay Morse $1,000 to paint a portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette. The hero of the revolution was coming to Washington to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the start of the war. And he would sit for Morse, if the painter could leave right away. So he packed his easel and his brushes and his paints and clothes that were good enough to wear when meeting a man like Lafayette. And he kissed his pregnant wife, and he left that night. On another night, a week later, Morse was in his rented studio in Washington, preparing for the arrival the next morning of his distinguished subject. He heard a knock on the door, and there was a courier, breathless and dirty from a hard ride on hard road, handing him a note that was five words long. Your dear wife is convalescent. He left that night. He rode for six days straight, on horseback and in the backs of juddering wagons, wrapped in blankets against the cold wind of October nights. And when he made it to New Haven and ran through fallen leaves up to the house on Whitney Avenue, he learned that his wife was dead. In fact, she had died before the courier had knocked on his door in Washington. In fact, she had already been buried some morning while he was on the road, while he was racing home to be by her side and sit with her while she got better. Samuel Finley Brees Morse spent the next 45 years of his life trying to make sure no one would have to feel the way he felt that night, ever again. Samuel Finley Brees Morse spent the next 45 years inventing the telegraph to turn real space and real distance into illusion in developing Morse code, dots and lines that could transmit the stuff of real lives and of dying wives.